Hello everybody and welcome to video number 34 of the online version of the Fusion Research Lecture. We are in chapter 6, Turbulent Transport, and in the last video we talked about the underlying electrostatic instabilities, the interchange instability and the drift wave instability, leading to turbulence. In this video we will have a look at uh, an approximate or estimating expression for the transport. So we will actually talk about the turbulent transport. Turbulent transport. And in, on this slide, I have shown you two time traces from measurements of a plasma. On the left hand side, this is the plasma potential. And on the right hand side, this is the plasma density, both measured by means of Lange probes. And you can see how both quantities are varying over time. So this is measured at a fixed position. So they are the, the quantities are fluctuating. And these are basically the quantities we want to measure. So sorry, uh, the quantities to measure in plasmas because um, they are mostly relatively easy to measure um, and uh, they allow us um, to get quite a decent amount of information out of it. Well, let me rewrite that again. Um, quantities to measure in plasmas. This is like on the left hand side of the potential being a function of both, uh, both position and time where we have like a background potential phi naught which is independent of the time, just a function of the position, and then plus the varying part, so phi twiddle, which is a function of both position and time. And the same is true for the density, being a function of position and time, where we have the unperturbed background density and not plus the perturbed part, which is then again a function of position and time. Okay, now what to do with with such time traces? One important thing to do is calculate the auto or cross correlation function. Now to understand the cross correlation function, it's easiest to look at the auto correlation function. So uh, calculation of the auto and cross correlation function as illustrated here. So let's first focus on the autocorrelation function. Now what is the autocorrelation function? When you calculate that, what you need to do, you first need to duplicate, duplicate a time series. After um, you have duplicated the time series, you need to shift one of the time series by a certain interval tau. So you need to shift one of the time series by an interval, by a time interval tau. And then you need to multiply and integrate the two time series. You need to multiply the two time series with each other and the product need to be integrated. And integrate. And that basically corresponds to the auto correlation function. And if you do that, then you uh, apply an additional normalization such that the autocorrelation function, the index, the index here is nn because I cor uh, correlate the density with the density, so with itself, that the autocorrelation of zero, so of a time lag of zero, is one. So that is per definition. If you look at the time trace shown on the left hand side or at the autocorrelation function, um, you can see that here at position zero, so at time lag is zero, we have a correlation of one. Again, this is achieved by duplicating a time series, shifting one of the time series by an interval tau, multiply and integrate it then. And we get this one over E value here, 
this is something like this is called the correlation time and this tells us something about the lifetime of the structure at that position so this is how long the structure is correlated at the position where it was measured so the autocorrelation function tells us allows us to deduce the correlation time Uh, the correlation time tau core and the same is true we for a spatial um, correlation function so if we would make a spatial autocorrelation function so shift it in space if we would have a measurement in space and not in time here we are in time then we would get from that the correlation length so this is equivalent we can also obtain a correlation length L core from an equivalent measurement in space. And now the cross correlation function is just doing the same with density and potential instead of density density. So the cross correlation, the cross correlation is the same but using density and potential. And remember in the last video we talked about the cross correlation that the um, cross phase we get from that which is a quantity which you can get from the cross correlation is an important quantity for the transport now let's try to make an estimation for the turbulent diffusion coefficient so a turbulent diffusion coefficient um, based on the random walk approach. For the step size, we take the correlation length. And for the step time, we take the correlation time. For the step time, we take the correlation time. Meaning that the diffusion coefficient based on random walk approach can then be approximated by a correlation the correlation length squared over tau correlation and the characteristic length the correlation length is given basically uh, by the e cross b drift so the characteristic characteristic length L core is given by the E cross B drift due to the varying electric field. Remember we have electrostatic instabilities, electrostatic turbulence here. It is given uh, defined by the product of the drift velocity, the radial drift velocity times the correlation time. So the distance such a vortice it travels within the correlation time. And then this allows us to estimate the turbulent diffusion coefficient inserting in the above equation uh, to be on the order of U R, the velocity due to the E cross B drift squared times the correlation time as an estimation for the diffusion coefficient. Now let's look at the transport. So the transport is, as we already said a few times, given by a diffusion coefficient, now here for the turbulent uh, scenario, times density gradient, grad n. And then for the diffusion coefficient, we can now insert what we just had on the previous slide. So the e cross b velocity times the correlation time and then the density gradient and then inserting uh, the definition of the or inserting the uh, expression the expression for the correlation length which we had on the on the previous slide then we get minus l core times grad n times the drift velocity 
And now we apply the so-called mixing length model. The mixing length model, which basically tells us that the that the amplitude of the fluctuation is given by the correlation length, by the structure size, the size of the vortices. So the fluctuation amplitude can be roughly estimated by the size of the vortices, which is the correlation length, and then times the density gradient. So the larger the gradient, the larger the fluctuation amplitude. Something easy to imagine. If you have a higher gradient, you have basically more free energy, which can lead to larger fluctuation amplitude. This is the uh, mixing length um, model. And then we can write the um, the transport as n um, twiddle, so the density variation, since uh, L core times grad n is the density variation, times the drift velocity. And um, now we should have in mind that the drift velocity is proportional to or can be estimated, at least its uh, quantity, its um, amplitude, by the radial electric field over the magnetic field. And if we now were to look at the transport, then we need, since you've seen that it varies, it varies over time, and we need to make a temporal average, so an average over time, indicated by these brackets, and the T in the index is that it's an average over time, then we assume by, uh, we want to just know an order of magnitude expression, setting the magnetic field to one here, that this is the temporal average over the uh, density variation, and then times the electric field variation, just uh, inserting the expression for the drift velocity. And what we now do is we take these time traces as Fourier series, meaning if we have um, some quantity ft, then we um, take, it, take it into Fourier space or use its Fourier transformation such that ft can be expressed by normalization 1 over 2 pi times the integral of the amplitude components f omega. Sorry, this is supposed to read f omega. Let's properly write that again. Um, f hat for the amplitude components omega. So every frequency component has its own amplitude times e to the power of i omega t d omega inserting that for the time series of density and electric field then uh, we can finally write it as the integral over n hat um, of omega times e hat of omega and now we can, uh, with, the, with the exponential functions there, we can rewrite it finally as cosine of, so this is like a, a bit of algebra involved here, cosine of phi e minus phi n d omega, and this is the cross face I talked about earlier. This is the cross face I talked about earlier. So here we have this expression, uh, which was basically um, kind of mentioned in the last video, namely that the transport depends on the cross face between density and electric field or density and potential. And um, here you can see this expression. And by the way, um, just as a reminder, note that 
the phase between electric field and density is the phase between, um, sorry, this is supposed to be a phi, the phase between potential and density plus or minus pi half. Uh, so the electric field shifted with respect to the potential uh, to its phase by pi half. Okay, that was very briefly just uh, in video to get an approximate expression for the turbulent transport. I briefly showed you in the beginning of this video the quantities we're interested in, that is the potential and the density and how these quantities depend both on time and position. I briefly talked about the autocorrelation function and the cross-correlation function. And then we used the random walk model to describe the uh, diffusion coefficient where we used the correlation length as the step size and the correlation time as the step time. And then the E, the e cross B drift resulting from the varying electric field which defines uh, to, to define a correlation length and interpreting it as a characteristic length. And then here we have the an estimation for the turbulent transport. Most importantly, we have an estimation which shows us if we um, do not regard the absolute numbers, but which shows us that the turbulent transport depends on the cross phase between density and uh, potential um, fluctuation between the phase of these two quantities. That's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next video.